bestbookbits.com brings you the book summary of Spirit Hacking by Shaman Durek. Six shamanic keys to reclaim your personal power, transform yourself, and light up the world. In Spirit Hacking, Shaman Durek, a sixth generation shaman, shares life altering shamanic keys, allowing you to tap into your personal power. You will banish fear and darkness from your life in favor of light, positivity, and strength. Shaman Durek's bold and sometimes controversial wisdom shakes loose our assumptions about ourselves and the world around us. He ultimately teaches us how to step fearlessly out of this blackout, the age of darkness we are currently experiencing, and access a place of fierce empowerment by use of tools and techniques of timeless shamanic tradition. This transformation is both personal and collective. As individuals step out of darkness, and begin to experience the light, we bring our loved ones and communities out of the shadows as well. Shaman Durek inherited a rich legacy of ancient wisdom and now shares this knowledge for a modern context. He advises everyone from celebrities to royals. Spirit hacking shatters readers' complacency, giving them tools to navigate the tumultuous times in which we find ourselves. We will emerge from this period happier, lighter, and more vibrant than ever before. Do you ever think that something is wrong when you consider your everyday life? So many people do, whether it's frustration with our work, a general sense of tension, or a persistent pain that won't go away. The outcome isn't different. We feel stuck and dissatisfied. We frequently attempt to find comfort in material products and retail therapy with an increasing sense of anxiety. However, this overview will lead you in a stronger direction to self-fulfillment. You will discover the origins of shamanism and explore what can be done for your welfare through this ancient spiritual practice. While you are reading, you will learn what keeps you back in the world and obtain the answers to reaching your maximum capabilities. You will find your way out of the dark and into the brightness of peace and fulfillment, empowerment with valuable ideas and practical suggestions. Chapter 1. The Matrix Leads You During the Pathway of a Meaningless Existence Perhaps you think that you know what a great life seems like. Maybe you believe it includes a respectable degree, a well-paying career, and a family home mortgage. But is the road to happiness always this typical way of living? Delve deeply, and he could see that you were brainwashed to believe that you think right. This may sound upsetting, but it's a reality that Shaman Durek believes. You have been fooled into willing these things for your whole life by a system that Durek calls the Matrix. The Matrix is a collection of rules and guidelines that leads our lives undetectably. Although it's power on us, almost no one doubt about it. The Matrix holds us from school to university, to the workplace, to the graveyard, on a direct and narrow road. But the thing the Matrix does is not only keep us going forward, but also keeping us in boxes. Boxes of tags such as race, sexuality, and religion. The Matrix says that we all must stay with individuals who are just like us inside our boxes. That suggests never hiking out and discovering the rich diversity that is intrinsic in humankind and all the numerous options the universe has to offer. Unfortunately, by drugging us, the matrix keeps us on this boring loop of life. It drugs us with fast food that makes us ill and with medicines that make us forget our suffering. Most of us are not happy with the matrix everyday race. We're looking forward to satisfaction that we are not able to get from alcohol, caffeine or food. Then why didn't we ruin the matrix and begin to live happier, truly free lives? Because the Matrix, sadly, is strong. It is a weapon of darkness. Darkness includes everything in the world that is not associated with love, according to Shaman Durek. The darkness affects people and creates conflict and loneliness. It lets us see everything in black and white. We begin thinking about things as right or wrong, with nothing in between. We also think of people as good or evil, and unfortunately, War and tragedy generally follow when that happens. We fight against each other 
instead of working together to break the matrix. However, we can get rid of the matrix. We'll discuss shamanism in the following sections to learn how to free ourselves. Chapter 2, Shamans are capable of communicating with spirits. Seeing it is sometimes said is believing. It has to have a physical appearance for anything to exist. What if everything you know about the laws of reality is wrong? Amazingly, shamans persistently experience something that does not exist in the three dimensions we see. Shamanism is an old practice that tells us that more than meets the eye, we are surrounded by things more than we see. Shamans assume that in the universe there are limitless levels, reaching beyond the three dimensions that we usually speak of. There are also limitless vibrational powers surrounding us, according to shamanism. We may learn to interpret these extra dimensions and powers with the correct coaching and instruments. Shamans claim that everything on earth, not only humans, but also things like trees and stones, have a life force, energy, and spirit. It might sound unbelievable, however, shamans learn from spirits and they believe that each life force has its intellect. For example, let's think about a large tree. Of course, you're not going to be able to share great literary works with it, but it doesn't change the fact that it has the wisdom to share with you. Because it has grown larger and taller with time and has strong roots. There have been shamans for as long as there were human beings. Traditionally, for the benefit of their tribe, they interacted with spirits. To regain peace and health, even now, when somebody or something gets out of balance and needs healing, shamans communicate with the spirits. Multiple shamans deal with various kinds of spirits with different techniques. For instance, water shamans in Indonesia only connect with water spirits. Also, there are plant and animal shamans, most of whom sense spirits through consuming hallucinogenic compounds derived from animals and plants. The author is a spirit shaman. That means that since he is accompanied by spirits always, he doesn't need water or any material to connect with him with the spirit world. Spirit shamanism function as tubes that spirits can pass. The author could channel the spirit of a Tibetan monk or an African tribal leader in his sessions. When these spirits inhabit his body, he can speak in languages or tongues that he doesn't know. Shamanism can help us escape the matrix that governs our lives, as we will explore in the next chapter. Chapter 3. Move beyond the matrix to find your inner self. So often, we allow the matrix to determine our wishes for us. We're going to let it tell us we want fancy cars, big homes, strong social prestige. The Matrix, though, an alluring marketing scheme known as High Glamour, convinces us of these superficial fantasies. High Glamour holds us in a state of constant desire for material things. It's all from the fashion business that makes us feel unattractive to the entertainment business and social media that holds us fascinated with famous people. What is the way of liberating yourself from the relentless loop of materialism and attraction of the matrix? You will concentrate on taking action and escaping the limitations of the matrix when you realize who you are and what you need. Unfortunately, it is a tougher than it seems because the high glamour made everyone's desires weak. We are easily fooled by our objectives and captivated by the glam of consumer culture. However, there is a way to deepen your will. It is the shamanistic technique called the fire screening. African shamans claim that fire improves our vision, so you can develop a sense of awareness and commitment to your true self and your true desires through fire screening. What you need are five candles, a clock, and a darkened room to practice this method. Sit in the middle of the room and place the four candles around you in a circle, one on the compass for every direction and the fifth candle in front of you and light up all five candles and set your alarm for five minutes. Then you should stare straight into the burning fire in front of you. When you are watching the flame dance, keep a particular thought in your mind. 
There is no limit to this thought. You may think about the person you are in love with or your ideal career. Keep staring at the flame and having this thought on your mind for the entire time. The thought is a sign of your dedication to your authentic self and your gaze is a sign of your loyalty. The flame inside of you is nurtured by fire screening and allows you to see much more easily. It's an effective way to learn reality with yourself and get rid of the matrix. Chapter 4. Time is not rectilinear and accomplishment is never out of the way. If you want to leave the matrix, knowing your true self is important, but it's not the only tool you'll use. You'll have to arm yourself with plenty of completely new values as well. Primarily, how you perceive working hard and achievements will have to change. So let's check in with a conviction that you probably have before we discuss these new values. If you're similar to most people, you are most likely to believe it would take considerable time and dedication to fulfill your goals. You believe that it will be in the long future if your wishes do happen after you've paid your dues and struggled in search of them. But it is a conviction that you should get rid of. The unbelievable reality is that all humans are born with unlimited qualities of imaginative power and ability. This implies that it does not have to be hard or take a very long time to build a real, fulfilled life. You can enjoy a life of achievement at the moment. You don't need to wait for the future to come. The future, in reality, is already happening. It might sound weird, but shamans don't think the time is linear. Rather, they claim that the present, the future, and the past all exist together, and the future is continually changing due to the decisions you make in each current moment. You should use this non-linear perception of time to accomplish your goals earlier instead of later. Changing the tense that you think about your dreams is one of the easiest strategies for success. Speak about it like it's already happening, rather than asking yourself, what will you do or what you think will happen? For instance, instead of saying to yourself, my book will be published and read by thousands, you might say, my book is published and read by thousands of people. If we talk about our dreams as if they have already been accomplished rather than as a future scenario, our minds begin to think about them as a clear fact. When that happens, your ego, which always wishes you to be right, is empowered to ensure that the future is in line with the desires of your mind, and you've transformed your wish into reality without realizing it. Chapter 5 you can give away to the darkness by addressing the underground spirits. We have discovered that darkness is characterized by the author as anything that is not associated with love and optimism in the universe. But in other words, how does this darkness show itself? How does it look? You might visualize ghosts, monsters, and devils when you imagine darkness. But the darkness is not as blatantly frightening as that. Usually, the darkness shows itself in your mind like a little voice. It sounds like the voice of your own. This voice tries to make you believe that you don't deserve love or you won't be good enough. But even if it feels like a sound on your voice in your mind, it's not yours. Although it doesn't seem like that, Shaman Durek assumes that this voice truly is a spirit from the underworld. Maybe you're curious how this works. The author describes this underworld as a place in which human souls are stuck. Their spirits get stuck in space in the underworld if a person dies before they can get over or traumatic event they have had. And when a living human experiences the same trauma like a specific spirit from the underworld, the traumatized spirit is drawn to them and begins to feed off their emotions of conflict and sorrow. So how are we coping with these spirits from the underworld? Oh, that's a certain, not a sharp pole and garlic. You should handle these spirits with kindness and make them leave the underworld and get it over with if you want to save yourself. You can do this with this basic practice. Simply stand up with your arms folded. It's important to take a strong attitude. So the darkness understands that it can't deal with you from now on. Then start to hear the voice in your mind that's been dragging you down. Question this sound 
but don't get mad or judge it. Ask it if it is an underworld spirit, for the spirit will be frank and inform you if it is. When you know that you're struggling with a spirit from the underworld, ask why it has been chasing you for so long. After this, when you've dealt with the spirit and understood why it's in your life, it is time to set free from this sorrowed underworld spirit. Just tell it that you're bringing it back to the light to a position where it has the love it wants. Chapter 6. By engaging with your ancestors, you might be able to cure chronic pain. Most of us struggle with chronic pain. That doesn't go away. But doctors appear incapable of understanding or treating it. Some individuals live their entire life with this pain, never knowing the condition that triggered it or what they should do to recover. Shamans think that the origin of some chronic pain is in the deep of the molecules of our body cells. This suffering has been passed down from our ancestry to us. Modern Western culture would have you believe that your ancestors do not exist anymore, that they are completely gone when they die. But shamans realize, as we heard earlier, that there are so many multiple dimensions, and time is not linear. This implies that your ancestors are still around now with every action you take, standing near you. As Shaman Durek explains it, many of our ancient human lineages and communities have unfinished ancestral suffering, written into their genetic code, which leads the young generation to suffer. So if you'd like to cure your suffering, you also need to relieve the wounds of your ancestors. You need to build a deeper bond with your ancestors to begin the recovery process. This is a part of life for certain cultures. Mexico's Dia de los Mostos, or Day of the Dead, for example, is a holiday where people set out presents, sweets, and drinks to commemorate their ancestors. By creating an ancestor altar, you can build your ancestor ritual, prepare a table with a picture or painting of an ancestor with whom you would like to interact. Now put presents that you think they would like on the table. You may also put some gifts that represent things that you want yourself to get. For instance, if you want wealth, then you might give your ancestors some money. After this, light the candle for your ancestor and place it on the altar too. Unfortunately, other negative stuff, not just physical discomfort, can also be passed down to us from past generations. Our bloodlines are influenced by the functionless value of our ancestors. Maybe your great-grandparents had pessimistic views about wealth and thought his family would never be rich. Today, such beliefs can still influence your life and your attitude towards wealth. Fortunately, by addressing them and changing your behaviours, you can relieve your bloodline of harmful beliefs like these. Not only you, but every member of your family, past, current and future, will gain from this. Chapter 7 on Earth, every creature is conscious and strong. The internet is generally our first source of information in the new digital world. We believe that you can find multiple precious pieces of knowledge online. However, there's also another global web at our fingertips, only if we want to open our eyes to see it. It is a network of information that exists in the natural instead of the digital, and it's called Gaia. Gaia is what Mother Nature is called by shamans. Gaia is a female spirit, and with her blessing of sun and soil and oceans, she brings harmony and peace to the earth. Shamans value Gaia as a life force that is mindful and intelligent. Unfortunately, the majority of mankind refuses the value of the natural world and other creatures that live on earth. We just live believing that we are the only creatures that matter in this world. Almost like human greed by itself was not terrible enough. Our disregard for Gaia has catastrophic effects on our world as well. But almost none of us say a thing about mining, logging and global warming, which is a life-threatening thing. It's time for everyone to get connected to nature with this in consideration that we can begin to understand it and avoid its damage. By leaning into its strong healing powers, you can create a deeper bond with nature. 
Shamanism tells us that we can interact with plants, trees, and even the soil, and the benefit from their energy waves. It works with this strategy if you are physically connected to the thing that you'd like to experience in spirit. For instance, if you'd like to get into nature's world and interact with a plant, then just hold your fingers next to the leaf, then draw a circle in the air with your finger. This represents the room where you can carry the plant's spirit in shamanism. Then to reflect the shamanic antennas, draw a triangle inside the square from where the energy will be funneled. Ask the plant spirit to flood through you. Tell out loud you'd like to sense in your body the energy of the spirit. You can guide its energy to the part of you that wants to heal when you feel connected with the plant spirit. We do not always require the intent to find a connection, as shamanism teaches us. Spirit Hacking, Shamanic Keys from Shaman Durek. Book review to regain your personal power, turn yourself and light up the world. Book review. Many of us, the machine that has tricked us to lead traditional, consumerist lives that alienate us from our true selves. By breaking out the box that society has placed you in, accepting your authentic self, and allowing yourself to be directed by the spirits and energies that influence you, you will overcome the matrix and the darkness it represents. Fight back against the darkness. It may be real that the system is built to keep in the matrix, but this is not the reason for not fighting back. It is your choice to fight it or not now that you learned about the darkness we're struggling with. So take a look at how you live your life now and ask yourself if you can make a more meaningful addition to Gaia or humanity. And that's a wrap in the book summary of Spirit Hacking by Shaman Durek. If you're new to Best Book Bits, we have done over 700 video written and audio book summaries at Best Book Bits. Check us out on YouTube where you can watch all our top book summaries. Subscribe so you don't miss the latest video. Check us out on our website, bestbookbits.com, the home of the world's largest free book summary website with over 700 written book summaries where you can read. And we're also on Spotify and other podcast channels where you can listen to your favorite book summaries. So follow us on there so you never miss a summary. You can also support us on Patreon and check out our links and show notes below where you can keep Best Book Bits running by purchasing our products and services such as my book, Success in 50 Steps, The Proven Formula That Works. So check out that book now. We've also put together our top 150 Best Book Bits summaries in a massive PDF. So if you're interested in that, click the link to check that out. And if you want to be updated with the latest summaries via email, pop your email in the link below. We've also done some courses and coaching programs, so 28 Steps to Making Your Best Year Ever. Check out that course. That is my absolute favorite. And if you want me to coach you in a mastermind or one-on-one session, you can also apply using the link below. If you want this summary in a PDF format, pop your email below and we'll send this straight over to you. You can also follow us with our book club on Facebook. So check us out, Best Book Bits Book Club on Facebook. Chat with me through Instagram. I'm on Instagram at Best Book Bits. DM me, come say hi, give me some book recommendations. Thanks for watching and listening of this summary, Spirit Hacking. Go out there and, no, go inside and find your spirit. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye.